Are you tired of those boring ass titles with just plain white text and nothing happening? Do you want to know how to make crazy 3D titles? Well, you've come to the correct place because I'm going to show you how to make insane 3D titles in just a few minutes. If you guys want to support the channel, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button real quick. It's free. It takes like one second. Two seconds. And also hit a quick like. If you guys want to cop some insane trippy editing packs, I'll leave a link in the description. I got a good offer going on right now. Check out some of the cool things you guys can do with it in just a few clicks on my website, bambuspacks.com. I know I've been gone for a while, but if you guys want more videos like this or other requests, just hit me with a comment below and tell me what you guys want to see. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. So once you're in After Effects and you got your clips ready, what you first want to do is press Ctrl Y to make a new solid and then find the element plugin and then add that to your clip. If you guys are wondering what this is over here, this is a free plugin by Video Copilot. It just makes the whole workflow in After Effects a lot easier. It just makes it easier to apply effects faster. So once you've applied elements, you can go into your scene setup. So once you're in the element window, click import and then navigate to your OBJ file. If you guys are wondering where to find OBJ files for this effect, you can go into, for example, CG Trader. They have a bunch of different OBJ files. So for example, I'm gonna find a heart to do the animation with. Most of these are paid, but you guys can go to free and then click on formats and find OBJ. Now all of these are free to download. You guys can use this for your animations. You can find basically anything to do the animation with. Just make sure that it's an OBJ file. Just search anything, you can like a smiley face, something like this is gonna work. It just all depends on your imagination. So once you downloaded your OBJ file, navigate it to here. Once you click import and press open and then just press OK. Make sure you guys go down here and click Normalize Size. So this is the model of a heart that I'm gonna use that I've downloaded. So OBJ files don't come with textures, but the textures are usually attached to them. So what you guys can do is click on the material, which is default right now, and then go to your diffuse and then click load texture. Now you guys need to find where your diffuse textures are loaded. Mine is right here and then press open. Now you guys can see it's automatically applied correctly to our OBJ file. File. and you guys can correct the exposure and contrast by dragging this bar right here just to make it pop a little bit more so that's perfect looks like a good heart to me now once you're happy with your 3d model that you want to use for the animation click ok and you're gonna see that's gonna pop up right here now to make this title animation work we need a reference title so just go on to your text tool and just drag a quick box so just for an example i'm going to use the text no heart I'm just going to drag it to the middle so it's easier to see i'm going to use this font right here you guys can find any font that you want to use now once you made your reference text you can just hide this layer and then go back to your element layer go to the custom layers custom text and then select the text layer that you made earlier now you guys gotta go into group one head to particle replicator make sure that you guys choose replicator shape and change that to layer so what we want to look at is is the custom layer make sure you choose the text and then what you can do is turn up the particle count and you guys gonna see it's kind of clumped up right now so we're gonna go to particle look and change the particle size turn that down until we can actually read what it says so you guys can see it's kind of already looking like something and then turn up the scale to match it up with the size that you guys want go back to your particle size and turn it up let's turn up some more particle counts to make it more readable like this and now you guys can see the 3d elements are replicating the text that we made before to make it look a little bit better go down to multi object and make sure that's enabled and now you guys can change the rotation random multi because we want all the hearts to look different and now you guys can see the text is becoming a little too thick so we gotta change the scales shapes again so i'm gonna go to particle size and turn that down a little bit just like this and then let's put up put on some more particle counts to make it more readable let's turn it up to like 1700 so this is all about experimentation just change the parameter let's change some parameter just change some parameter just change some parameters and make things look good so i'm happy with how that looks so what we're going to do now is to keyframe the rotation random multi beginning and then just go a few seconds in and just turn up the x quite a bit we might change this later and just see how that looks it all depends on how fast you want the objects to spin but this already looks pretty cool kind of want it a little bit slower so let's just turn down the rotation bits 
So now it's spinning a little bit slower. It matches kind of the aesthetic of the background a little bit better. So this looks pretty cool so far. Now we just gotta make the second part of the animation happen. So now we can disable this group one and then go back into our scene setup. And then what we need to do is go to the group folder and then make sure you duplicate it and make sure that this one is selected to two, the one that you just made and then press OK. So once you've done that and group one is hidden, you can go into group two. Now the point of having a second group is to make something that the animation can start from. And then we gotta make sure that the hearts are about the similar size as we had on the first group. So just enable multi-object again and just play with the settings a bit. And then we gotta make sure that we're displacing all the hearts because right now all the hearts are together in the middle. So I'm gonna go down to scatter and just scatter the hearts across the screen. This is a good starting point. Let's turn up the scatter multi a bit and we gotta turn down the size and then the size down here. So now you guys can see we're having a grid coming up. Just scatter them a bit again. The point I'm trying to make is that we gotta make it a bit random because right now it looks like they're all in a grid together. Turn up the particle size and then let's just turn up the noise amount. Let's just compare what the sizes with the group one. So that looks kind of similar with, I'm just looking at the size right now. Maybe turn up the size a tiny bit. All right, so this is a good starting point. Now what we need to do is to do the same with the rotation random multi as we did before. We gotta make sure that we keyframe that and then at the beginning and then go towards the end. Just turn up the times. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like the speed of the spinning right now. So that looks good for now. So now here comes the important part. We need to go into our animation engine and click enable. This is where all the magic happens. And then we gotta make sure that group one is enabled as before and group two is also enabled. So here is where we make the animation. So here is where you choose how the animation starts and this is where you choose how it ends. So group one is just our text and we don't want our text to be in the beginning. We want it to be on the end. So just change those around. So now you guys can see it starts with the hearts and now we gotta keyframe the animation to make sure that it ends with the text so just keyframe at zero percent let's drag it out a bit to the second clip and then keyframe at 100 and then we can easy ease these keyframes and let's just get a preview of how that looks so there seems to be an issue going on where the size is coming too big on the animation. So we gotta go back to our group two. Let's just change the particle size down a bit because I think this is where the issue is. And then let's turn down the particle count. That's a little bit better. So we'll just tweak this until they look kind of the same. That looks a bit better, but the hearts are a little bit too small. So we'll just turn up the object size a bit. All right, so I think we fixed the issue. So now the hearts are coming together as we want, so that's perfect. So let's just play that out and see how it looks so far. That looks pretty clean. But what we also can do is go back to our animation engine. We can change some things here. This is gonna change how the entire animation looks. So if you go to radial, it's gonna make the animation happen from the middle instead of from the edges as you saw before. So let's see how that is gonna look. That looks really good. And then we also can try random. Let's see how that looks. I think random is actually one of the better looking ones, but it's kind of starting a bit late. So you guys can see it's kind of holding all the way to 20% of the animation until it starts doing something. So we can actually change the starting point from started at 30% or 20%. Let's just try 20. So it's all about just experimentation to see what looks good. That looks really clean. You guys can also highlight the animation keyframes and then go into the graph editor. You guys can just play around with the graph editor to see how it affects your animation. Let's just let that render out and see how it, and see how it looks. Okay, it's kind of happening a bit too late, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna turn it back like this, more towards the center. So that looks pretty good, but there's some things we can do to make this a little bit better. We can actually keyframe the noise evolution on our second group to make the beginning come a little bit more flowing. Let's just keyframe this a bit, just towards the center from the start. Let's see how that affected it. 
Okay, that's way too much. Let's just turn it down, way down. Just a slight bit of noise happening. You can see that the hearts are moving a bit more towards the beginning because of the noise evolution. So let's see how that looks. We can see that it looks a bit better. We can also go back to group one and keyframe the Z position. So just start a keyframe. Let's have it go towards us. So just start it at 1500 in the beginning and then towards the end, drag it up. Let's see how that looks. That looks really good when it's moving a bit. I'm gonna drag this all the way out the second clip so that it doesn't stop as drastically as it did. Let's see how that looks now. Yeah, that looks really good. Now another thing I like to do is make sure that motion blur is enabled and enable it on the element layer so that we have some natural motion blur when the hearts are moving a bit. It's gonna make it look a bit smoother. Let's just pre-render that out. Now let's see how it looks. And wow, that just looks so much better with the motion blur on. It just looks so smooth right now. Now there's some few things you guys can do to make this look even better. Let's just add some curves to add some contrast to the hearts. And then add some brightness and contrast. Play around with this a bit. Turn off the contrast, turn down the brightness. It's all about what looks good for your guys' clips. So now it pops a bit more with the contrast that we just added. What we also can do is add some deep glow to make it glow a bit and make it look a little cooler. Just don't overdo this the exposure a bit and turn down the radius. Let's have mine at like 0 0.05 or 0 0.07. Just here's how it looks before and after. Let's just also add some flickering to this. We don't want to overdo the flickering either, so let's just pre-render a small bit. Yeah, the flickering is a bit too much, I'm going to turn it down to 0.1. Then render frequency to 15, make it a little bit more subtle. So I've pre-rendered it now, and this is the final result. So there's just so many things that you guys can do with this, a ton of different variations, so just go crazy with it guys. If you learned anything from this tutorial, make sure you guys click the like button and subscribe below, it's free. If you want some cool editing assets, check out my website down below at bambuspacks.com. I got a trippy pack deluxe at a good price, so you don't want to miss that. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.